Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's your hosts, Kim and my grandma. Gail, we're back. And uh, love is in the air this week. It's Valentine's Day. I'm excited. Do you have any plans for you and Poppy? Actually, yes. Uh, I think we're going out on Fami, and we're going to have a, a lovely dinner outside in uh, act- warm Palm Beach. That's That'll great. be nice. Yeah. I have no plans. Well, it's a long time. You've got four days. I know. How do I get a date in the next four days? I don't know if I would even want to go on a date on Valentine's Day. I feel like it, it's so serious. Well, you don't have to be serious. Uh, what you could do is uh, either be with friends and just have a fun dinner all together and just toast to each other and make everybody your Valentine. Right, a Galentine's Day. That's a very good idea. I yeah. like that. But if you were to go on a date on Valentine's Day, do you think it's really just a couple's holiday or do you think it could be with somebody you're seeing, you know, dating casually or if you're not even exclusive yet? Like, should you be going out on Valentine's Day? I think I think you should go out on Valentine's Day. It's a day of love. Yeah, and but you're not in one, love at that point. I know, but you know what? It's 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 a nice way to to be kind to one another and do something special. Uh, so you remember the evening, whether it be cooking at home, going to a cute little bistro, um, doing whatever, having little glass of wine. And, I don't and know, though. I think I mean that sounds lovely, but I think if I'm do doing that with somebody, it means at least that you have hope for the future, that it could be a relationship. I don't think you're doing it with the random date that... I don't know. I had like 40 Valentine's Day before I was 21. We all went out. We had a dinner or we went and, and sat and, and enjoyed each other's company. It does, every, every holiday doesn't have to be that special. Uh, this is a made-up holiday. Right. Uh, so then why even celebrate it? Well, it's like Christmas, it makes you feel good. And why not in these times of COVID have a night where you can just not think about that and enjoy somebody's company or a group of friends' companies and and just have a fun time. I Not everything has to be a relationship in this moment of history. I just think there's a lot of implications, which is why I kind of want to go through the do's and don'ts for Valentine's Day, especially in the beginning, like before your boyfriend and girlfriend, um, you know, do you think the guy should even, let's say you've gone on two dates, three dates, four dates, whatever it is, very early stages. Do you think the guy should even acknowledge the day and text like happy Valentine's Day or is it better to just avoid it? No, I, well, even if you're on one date, it's, if you're going to, if somebody is nice, it likes you or even doesn't have to be in a serious relationship, it's still sweet to say, Send you a, a a box of candy. Oh or, my, that's so extra to me. Like that's it's not a, extra. A box of candy can be two ninety nine in Publix. We it's don't the have sentiment, to go crazy. though. It's not about the money. It's more like you went out of your way and you decided to send me chocolates. Like if I went on one date with somebody and I got chocolates, I would be like serial killer, psychopath. Never talk to me again. Well, I think that's the problem with millennials. They take everything as uh, too seriously. You can you can have a, a a lovely evening and be friends with somebody and and share a, a chocolate covered strawberry and not be into a monumental relationship. Not everything has to be a relationship. Let's say let's let's have a friendship. Well, what about in the beginning with somebody? Well, I don't think you would go out with a friend on Valentine's Day. Then that's just a... I, I I don't agree. It's better than sitting home alone. That is true, especially during COVID. That's right. But you, you need to lift your spirits a little bit, and whatever it is to lift your spirits would be great. What about gifts? Like, do you get another person a gift? Well, that's serious now. That's right. That's a different level. And because you- also it's awkward. It's like, what if I get you a gift and you didn't get me a gift because you didn't expect me to get you a gift because we're not dating? Well, I, I think gift giving and, and anything on that level has to be when you've really sort of like each other on a, and made a, ser- a commitment of at least not going out with 400 other people, I think. Right, some I, certain, uh, some level of exclusivity. Exactly, exactly. But up until then, chocolate, wine, um, 
uh, any of that, those kind of little incidentals, or a card. A card is cute. A funny card that you. Well, that's a gift. Those are all gifts. They're gifts, but they're 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 not serious gifts. They're just saying that I'm thinking of you, which is very nice. I mean, I think it's nice to be thought of, whether it's a romantic thought or whether it's somebody you work with. Could say, I remember when we were kids, we used to have to make forty Valentines little um, cards and give everybody in your in, class in our class. So but that's elementary like, school. But that's really nice. But let me tell you something. If, I think we did it in college. <laughs> if a guy from my office sent me a Valentine's Day, that I would hashtag in, me to him in two seconds. Yeah, I think that's inappropriate in yeah. today's culture. Correct. Today, I mean, you know, it's completely different. In the 50s and 60s, a Valentine card didn't mean harassment. It's it. Today, I think it, it kind of would. So I would not recommend doing that. I think that's... Okay. That's I, I sort of agree with that. Yeah. So let's go through a little bit more specifically. First option, what if you match with someone on a dating app, but you have not gone out and never gone on a date. You don't, no Valentine's. No Valentine's, no right? Valentine's. Not even a Valentine text. No. Yeah, no. I think that would be weird. Okay, what if you went on one date with the person? Well, then I then it still might be a little weird, but you might send a little text, hope you're having a nice Valentine's evening. Yeah, that could be nice. What about if you've been going on dates with someone a few times and you're also sleeping together? Well, that that then you need more than a card. You think so? Of, yeah, then a box of candy would be really nice, or mm. a flower. Interesting, guys. Take note. I don't know if I would expect that, or if any like. Well, then your expectations are too low. <laughs> we know this. Okay. Um. What if you're in a relationship? You're exclusive. It's been a few months. Obviously, you're gonna celebrate Valentine's Day, but to what extent do you think? Like, are you going out for dinner? Are you? Well, you yeah. Can make right. Dinner home. You can make a, a, a romantic dinner home. Uh, you can make some cookies together in the form of, in the shape of hearts. Be creative. I think today it's all about creativity in a relationship. You can't. It's not a normal time, so you can't do normal things. And some people feel comfortable going out for dinner. Some people rather stay home for dinner. I think that should be made uh, up to the individual. But I think you can have fun with it and create something fun in your own space, whether it be it, if it's in a restaurant, then pick something that has a Valentine theme. Or if you're going to do it home, there's nothing like a little red rose on a table in a vase. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that sells that spells valentine's to me yeah and i think a night in especially during covid might be the mood yeah uh, the move i mean well especially if you if you know how to cook if you don't know how to cook then the first gift you have to buy yourself is a cookbook. <laughs> that's true valentine's day gift to me is a cookbook which we we learned this this week i went on a disaster of a cooking date um literally just I, I used to cook for myself all the time. I think living in New York City, I got a little comfortable with ordering in. So it's been a while. And then down here, you know, it's like I live with you. So if anything, you would be cooking, not me, or we would be going out, whatever it is. Um, but I went on a date this week where it was my responsibility to cook. You and I, like, from as soon as we found that out, you were like, Kim. What was your thought? Uh, well, I have you to need tell help. You, you need to know. How, you have to boil the water before you put the pasta. Okay. okay. That so we is decided. Bad. Go back a little bit. We decided. All right. What's an easy thing for me? Pasta. Anyone can make pasta. You turn. You boil some water. You throw it in. So first we go to Publix, which is a supermarket down in. So and that was that was like the price is right. We were literally going up and down the aisles, and you did a good job. You got all the ingredients; everything was perfect. The instructions are on the side of the box of pasta. <laughs> but it's, also, do we love that? Like we're doing the shopping together for my date. Like there was no chance I was doing this alone. I would not have gotten. I would have literally got toaster. This strudel. was something <laughs> out of out of a science, a sci-fi movie. Going down the aisles and asking the guy behind the uh, seafood counter how many shrimp should two people eat. Yeah, and it was. Like shopping for idiots, <laughs> like well, what is it like for dumb? I didn't want to say that, but but yeah. that was how it turned out. But anyway, that that was fun. I mean, that's an experience, well, and you know what? Since COVID, you haven't really gone to the market that much, right? I, mean, I seem to go. We were to careful, the obviously. Um, but yeah, that's true. Like I really haven't, so it felt like an out of water body but experience. But you did go to school for four years where you cooked in no, your of apartment. Course. What that pasta couldn't have taken four no, no. years to cook. I, of my friends, like I'm usually the cook. Like I know I like being in the kitchen and doing that. I don't know what happened here. Like so, basically, I. <laughs> I think I got like a panic attack while I was cooking and everything, my mind went, I blacked out and I don't know what happened. 
I, all the pasta stuck together. It was inedible. Mush could not eat. Uh, well, I think, Kimmy, the, the first thing we learned from this experience is definitely have to go online and look at a cooking class. Yeah. And just follow some recipes. No, but the, you're it was good the at basics. following recipes. Yeah, I can follow ba- the recipes. It was the basics of, like, not boiling the water correctly. Very bad. I'm not even sure, like, if the stove was on high or on low. And then I also made a mess of his kitchen, which I felt really bad about. So by the time cleaning, like, we had to do the dishes at the end, he was like, you know what? Honey, you just take a seat. I think you're done. I think I think you this this is your your first encounter with that you need a cooking lesson. So move on. It wasn't a disaster. He yeah. was a good sport. Correct. And you know what? You had an experience, but definitely you, you cannot work for a pasta company. But I like. Did this ever happen to you, where you had to cook on well, a date? Well, I'll tell you the worst thing that ever happened to me with cooking, and I did it for your grandfather when we were first married. We. I my, I didn't know how to cook at all, and I was only twenty one. So that was a, uh, I was really in. So your mom just didn't teach you, or no? Because we really had people who used to make us dinner. That's so sad to say. Because mm-hmm. I don't. I I really when I look back on it, I think I was so privileged. It was For ridiculous. Sure. But I I was now a married girl of twenty one, and I had to make dinner. And my husband was at work, and I was a stay at home. Uh, wife and now I, I went to the market I was very good I had a I went to the market I got chicken I got spices I got a vegetable and uh, I was all ready and I called my mother up and I said mom what do I do with a roast chicken and she said Gail you just salt pepper and put it in a 400 degree oven it'll be perfect he'll love it so I don't know I started around four o'clock and I got everything prepared I put the chicken in the oven and lo and behold I, I peeked at it around five because she said, don't open the oven. Just leave it alone. It'll cook on itself mm-hmm. and you'll smell it. I didn't smell anything. Nothing no, nothing was coming out of the oven. I finally looked in the oven. It's still white. I said, this is very strange. Maybe it's supposed to look like this. So he came, my husband came home at six o'clock. He said, something is lovely in the kitchen. I said, I don't know. I think something's wrong. It doesn't seem to be golden crispy. Right. He said, no, no, I'm sure it's perfect. So now we sit down. I bring out this chicken that looked exactly the way it was when I bought it at the supermarket. And he said, and it, this is true love. Mm-hmm. He said, it looks great. I said, are you kidding me? It's not cooked. <laughs> it looks the same as at four o'clock. He says, no, it's going to be Was it cold? Great. It was ice cold. It was, <laughs> it was ice cold. And he was about to take a, a, his knife and cut it. I said, don't you dare. I'm throwing this in the, in the garbage. There's something wrong. Lo and behold, he goes to the, to the oven. He says, there must be something wrong. The oven was never attached to the wall. Oh, geez. So I could have cooked that chicken for Wait, 20 Wait, but I don't hours. understand. Like, did you just not, this was the first time you it used was, the oven? It was the first. Well, I had just gotten married. How long married. did you live there? Oh, I think six months. No. <laughs> well, I wasn't exactly a good cook. So I, I, this was my first experiment in the kitchen. So, so what did you do for six months? Well, we went out. We lived in... Every night? Yeah, we used to go... Well, we lived in New York City. We went downstairs, and there was little coffee shops and things, and it was easier to eat out than making a meal. But then that had to stop. I had to learn. Right. Well, this was an experience. We got it all hooked up, and then my chicken was fine. Wait, also, didn't you tell me a date with Poppy once um, with the lamb chops? Oh, well, that was when we were dating. Now we're going into my old dates? (laughs) Kimmy, this is terrible. Um, When I first met your, your grandfather, I was trying to improve press him and I was in my grandparents apartment and he said why don't we have a he was at school and I was at school still he said uh you know I'd really love to eat at home I don't really want to go out I have a lot to study and I said oh sure I can I can do that and I said what do you like and he said oh I love lamb chops I said so do I so I hung up the phone and I went over to I was staying with my grandmother as you're staying with me right we had the same kind of fun relationship and my grandmother said don't worry, I'll do it for you. So my grandmother. Why'd you made, say okay? Because I didn't. Have, I wouldn't know. I've known how to fix a lamb chop. Right, right. It was either did. like you did it. She's doing it, or you're ordering it. Like there was well, no. We didn't know there was no. Okay, ordering she was in. doing we're it, or you about, were getting a pizza. Right. Exactly. Well, there wasn't any pizza deliveries there. Your oh. your date. You're you're doing a whole different time frame. We didn't have those kind of things. Okay. In well, you had cereal, so you could have had a bowl of cereal. We could have had cereal. Right. But that wasn't a date. That wasn't acceptable. Sure. So I knew that the expectation was that he was getting lamb chops and something with it. So my grandmother made it, and then I said to my grandma and my grandpa, "Disappear when he <laughs> comes." And now he came. I set the table, which I did. Oh, were they there during the date? 
Well, not during the day, but I. But Where'd they, they go? were there at the time. And they went out. For, they went out Oh, they left. Dinner. Okay. And we had our date, and he sat down, and he said, oh, my gosh, these are the most delicious lamb chops. I said, oh, thank you, and I think I made a baked potato. That's so And I took all the credit, and not until we were married did I fess up. That's crazy. That's so funny. Well, that's why he was probably so excited for the chicken. He was like, those lamb chops, I'm still thinking about it. Why don't you make them anymore? <laughs> well, that could be. He's still waiting for those lamb chops. Right. Well, I think cooking, very cute idea for Valentine's Day. If you do want to go out for dinner, I like. I don't know. I'm avoiding it because I think there's going to be a lot of PDA happening. Public displays of affection. <laughs> well, that could be, but that's all right. That's nice. You you. How do you feel about it, though, like – when you're out for dinner and you see another, there's a, obviously levels, but if you see another couple at the table next to you making out, it's a little They're getting like, divorced. <laughs> or they're never getting together. That's a one night stand. They're, they're all over each other for a reason and it's never happening on a long term basis. So you think no, if a couple is super PDA, it means they're kind of like hiding issues? What does that mean? If, so, if a couple is on top of each other making out, showing a lot, holding hands in front of other people, does well, that mean. I think they just are. I, I I think they're just too into themselves and they're oblivious to everybody else, or they're showing off. Like the candle will burn out quick. Exactly. In my opinion, you can't keep that up. Right. But a little holding hands is off and looking sure. in each other's eyes is is sort of nice. Yeah. No. There's levels. I just think like the, there's some couples that are more yeah, like those that than others. Break up. I, they, I don't they have know. nothing behind all the the kissy huggy business. I don't know if they always. Break up, but I feel like for sure that they are proving something to other people, that could which be. rubs me the wrong way. Right. Like, what you want to prove that you're so in love? Like, honey, I, I believe you. You don't take have it, to prove take anything. Take it to the bedroom. Right. Take it to the bedroom. It doesn't belong in a restaurant. Right. Okay, so then what, what do you do if you are in a long-distance relationship this Valentine's Day? Um, Cry a lot. Be sad about it? Well, I think so. If you If you really – if you really – crazy about somebody and, and want to be together it's sort of sad to be to be separated I mean it's like families in this time that are separated it's an emotional toll on you and um, I feel badly for all those people and uh, we send them a little bit of love ourselves it's, it's not a good time well I think there's a lot of long distance happening during COVID right now since people went home to their families or they might not be working in the cities they're working in so I'm sure there's more of that this year probably than any other year um, but luckily we live in an age of FaceTime and all these things where you can kind of still like I mean not physically but be together in a way I just hope all of you are sending nudes to your boyfriend or girlfriend if they are in a separate place I think Um, that's a great idea sending nudes no not nudes sending a little love no 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 I I think nudes naked yeah, like a no, naked picture. No, nobody should send anything naked over the over the internet. Bad yeah, no, move. no, no. But like on Snapchat or no, or no in- naked photos. The- no <laughs> naked photos. They that disappear. Bad. No, nothing disappears. It's going into the cloud, and somebody's going the to cloud. Find it. <laughs> Whatever that is, the cloud is going to have it. Yeah, but like I, it's very, very common, especially um, I think during COVID, during quarantine. I think nudes and especially sexting. You know, just like talk texting and. Like this ha- is way beyond my field of expertise, Kimmy. I it's think a must. This, it's it a, a must. must. Oh gosh. I, I mean, I would have failed. Well, back in the day, phone sex must have happened. It was just I'm sure it did over the phone versus texting, which I think is kind of awkward because it's like live. Really heard heard of all these things going on. I, I we lived in a bubble in the '60s and the '50s. Unless you were a hippie, who did phone sex? I mean, I, I can't, we didn't do regular sex, so I can't right. know why phone sex came into this. Yeah, I just think like. It's it's definitely prevalent right now, and I think why not do it? Definitely, obviously, I'm not saying like send it to like the guy you've gone on one date with and is a stranger, whatever. But like someone you're like seeing, even like not exclusively, but like you think no, it's leading there. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. I don't know. I think you can, and it's great. You can send the same nude to multiple people at the same time. Send a mass snap. You're, oh my you're, you're set. Oh no, that's that's a ter- That's terrible. That's not a good idea at all. That's that's just looking for trouble. Do you think though, like, let's say you do send photos and you're dating someone, and then you end up like breaking up naturally, and, and they have, which you will. Um, do you think you can ask that person to delete your nudes if it wasn't sent over like Snapchat? If it was sent and you can't delete them. Guess what? You had no business sending them to begin with. So you're like, if it's on the internet, that's on you, not that's, on them. That's correct. That's correct. 
And um, do you think if somebody else sends your partner a nude, like, are they cheating? Does that count as cheating? Well, not if it, unless it's an old girlfriend. And if it's an old girlfriend and he doesn't like on it, then then he's then you're got a situation. Right. It's one thing to be like, why the hell did you send me this? But like. If they're sending it, there's there's smoke where there's fire. Like, why would someone just be sending Correct. your SO? The flame is still alive. Right. Um, and I think, like, if you're not sending nudes, Grandma, do you know where they're going to go to? They're going to go to OnlyFans. To what? What is that? Okay, so it's basically, it's it's like the new era of porn, essentially. Oh, no, but, let's not talk about porn. Porn is beyond Okay, it's not, but it's not porn. Because it's they're not prostitutes and they're not porn stars. They're normal girls. No, they're not normal. <laughs> they're not normal. If they Wait, before have we judge, you- can I just explain to you okay. what it is? Okay. So it's basically like models and like social media influencers, and they have accounts on this OnlyFans, and they get paid a fee for their photos, but like they don't have to be naked photos. Oh, I, I think they're that's like, sort of sad. This is no, so It's very sad. sad. No, no, no. I would really say if you're in a pinch and like you're if you're between this and doing porn, this is way better um, because you're in control of like the money that you get. It's literally changing that whole industry. Like girls can get five or guys, I guess. Go get a job. Go go because it's easy money. Easy money. You know what? Go clean the streets. And work for the city, the sanitation company. What and have, like, more self-respect. Uh, yes. I, I think this is degrading, especially for, I mean, women have come such a long way. Why would you take a step Well, guys step can back? do this, too. Well, I don't want to see them either. I, I think it's all terrible. I mean, you know what? In this day and age, why put your bodies out there as a way of making money? I mean, because they're doing a model it. selling a product. Yeah. That's different. Well, but if you're just selling yourself. That that's like another form of uh, I don't know it's it's sort of uh, I don't know what you call it, narcissistic. It, it's oh it's, for sure, but that's what Instagram even is now. Like people posting their ass on Instagram. Well, I think it's too much. I don't have to know everybody's business twenty four seven. Right, but it's just, it's unhealthy for sure. But it's like kind of what's happened. I'm kind of like you do you like, but prepare to be judged by people I, you might not attract the right people if you have an only fans uh, i i i would not put yourself in that right in that case, in, Do, the, so what about platform. what about if your man like if your boyfriend is subscribed to only fans and he's like he's paying women to see these things like, i would can that man immediately he's done he's done so no he doesn't get a second chance okay no second Hot chance take not no if he's looking at other girls and he's not satisfied with you he's history all right um some more ideas for Valentine's Day, going back a little bit. If you're celebrating with your long-distance boyfriend, you're FaceTiming, um, what are some – do you have any, like, ideas of what you can do um, oh, to spice that, it up? Yeah, well, I don't know if you have to spice it up, but even look at all the servicemen and service women out there who do long-distance uh, relationships and do this over the uh, – uh, on their iPads or how, what other uh, are their phones. I think – what you do is you get dressed like you would if you were going to a party. You put on a pretty little outfit or the man puts on a lovely shirt or mm-hmm. a jacket and you do something special. You don't do the ordinary thing. You don't wear your flip flops around the house or, and, yeah. and your uh, pajama tops. Even though they're only seeing you from the waist It down. doesn't matter. You're making this a different night. Yeah. And I think that's very important. It's a, it's a night to share love, kindness, whatever you want to call it, with somebody who's not with you. Mm-hmm. So I think you have to make it special, even if you toast each other. Virtually. Yeah, I say, I think, I think like, have a fun. drink for sure. Like, yeah. you can each have a glass of wine, and have the same bottle. It, even if you don't drink it, just to toast it. And, yeah. And maybe have a, a, a candy or a cookie and, and take a bite, and he takes a bite. Uh, just something that's cute. I think that, that would be nice. And, uh, uh, you know, depending on your degree of sentimentality, write a poem how much i miss you oh. write a, uh, it would be very sweet we used to exchange poems i mean that used poems to be, uh, no i liked it i i mean i if a guy wrote me a poem i'm for it i just think like a lot of people would think that was that's too bad intense i think it's fair if the fellow is good at writing it or the woman is good at writing it why not express a little bit of care i don't know why person. i feel like sometimes we're in maybe it's this day and age you tell me where it's like if people were like, oh, I wrote you a poem and and being so cheesy like that, for some reason, I feel like 
it's looked down on. Well, that's too bad. What about William Shakespeare? He would have been he would have been astounded to hear somebody looking down at poetry. I'm right. not saying roses are red, violets right, right, right. are blue, but if somebody writes one or two lines, it might be something personal for you, something beautiful. Uh, that's interesting I, to me, though, just because now, like, we're much um, more open to like that. We're trying to get rid of toxic masculinity mm-hmm. that might have been correct present more in your time than my time of a guy has to be this these roles they have to be the breadwinner they have to um you know not be as emotional as a woman I think we've made a lot of progress and there's a lot more to go right um so I'm surprised why I still have this bias of like guys writing poetry like that's soft no because I, I think that's just it's just kindness and I think it, it could be the guy it could be the girl whoever if, if it speaks to them I don't think anything should be forced mm-hmm. if somebody likes doing it they right. should do it because you can see through it if so if someone's exactly. like not like that and then they write you a poem you're exactly. like exactly who wrote probably that? got it off the off online some, uh, online thing uh, but, but like you know what if your girl's never heard a Shakespeare poem if she's not the brightest like to, the they, sharpest tool in the shed steal one from Shakespeare you'll never be caught it's not a bad idea it's really not Romeo and Juliet is pretty good so just wrapping things up here we wanted to say we really want more feedback from our listeners any questions that you have email them in to excuse my grandma at gmail.com or dm us on instagram at excuse my grandma or on my personal at kim merstein k-i-m-m-u-r-s-t-e-i-n and um I think that's it, Kim. It's a wrap for a third show, and hope everybody's enjoying us. I know, episode three. And we'd love any feedback if you guys do want to see guests. It's something that we're thinking about that's in the works. Well, um, not see. They can't see them. If you want to hear them. guests. <laughs> Now you're correcting me on well, my technology. It, well, the problem is we don't have a studio down here, so it would be pretty hard to see them. Maybe when you get back to your regular uh, activities, you have a screen, You could do all that. I don't know. I'm happy person. living here in Palm Beach. You're not getting rid of me so quickly. Okay, good. That's a deal. Okay, bye, guys.